Michael Manasco, and I am the Instructional Coordinator Librarian here at the University of Alabama in Huntsville Salmon Library. Another reason you're hearing my voice is that I'm also the English Librarian as well as the Business Librarian, among other things. So regarding these two disciplines, uh, I'm the librarian you're going to want to talk to anyway if you need some help finding resources or refining your search strategies, especially when it comes to business. Uh, the business aspect in finding company reports or industry reports, that can be a little tricky. And in this video, I'm just going to give kind of a quick high-level overview of where to go uh, on our website and some places I recommend going. And if you need further help, to reach back out to me via email or phone uh, to talk to me later if you need further help with this project. So as far as uh, this video, I'm just going to give you a few recommendations for your own recommendation report writing. Uh, as far as business writing goes. So uh, in the goals for the vid, I just want to make sure we go over the main library research tools in terms of how to access our primary discovery service, as well as how to find the databases. Again, one-on-one -on -one with me uh, in a session would be maybe better in terms of uh, working out exactly which databases you might need to use. Uh, but if you need specific help with these, this is kind of an intro. So there's a lot of different information types uh, you may be uh, coming across or seeking uh, in this project. Um, typically, they fall in the categories of primary or secondary information. Primary uh, sources obviously being uh, raw data, something in, in the context of what we're doing. Uh, industry or company level data, you might need statistics. Uh, that might come in the form of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, .gov, the government websites, uh, the SEC Edgar uh, Exchange site where you're seeing actual data reported by companies. You know, so essentially data that doesn't have a lot of interpretation to it, uh, but just data presented and that the interpretation is for you to do, uh, which may come in the form of secondary sources or secondary reports. So you yourselves, uh, as you're writing this analysis or a report, you're kind of doing some secondary writing yourself. You are uh, looking at data, interpreting, analyzing, and presenting. Uh, and so a lot of secondary sources come in the form of journals or magazines, sometimes books, sometimes the analysis reports you might find. And secondary sources come in many forms. Those might be scholarly journals, um, more of what we might call a popular journal or a professional journal. And one thing I want to point out is that when it comes to academic materials, remember you're looking uh, for scholarly journals, not magazines, when it comes to the academic portion. So you want things that may have a uh, title like something like the Journal of Management or the Journal of Marketing, things like that. Uh, they're going to be academic, scholarly, peer-reviewed, written in a very scientific way. And those should be vetted and refereed by subject experts, okay? And usually they will tell you. And typically they have the word journal in the title, not always. Popular sources may come in the form of magazines. Now that might be something like uh, Time Magazine or just a, a publication that the, a layperson might read, right? So you might find useful things there about business or business writing. Um, but another, a third type, which I'll kind of show you how to search on in our databases, would be professional titles. Uh, these come in the form of trade journals, we call them. You may see that term or hear that term. In business writing, uh, those are sort of the in-between titles. Those are the gray literature, we might call them. Uh, they're, not, they're not black and white, in other words. It's not academic. It's not popular. They're more of the in-between source. Those, those are things like advertising age or marketing monthly. Think of them as professional titles written by professionals for professionals, okay? So professional titles written by professionals for professionals. Those are often things that are sort of, you might use the word inside baseball, right? It's for people who know. Uh, it's the kind of magazine or journal you might find on the desk of a CEO. Uh, it, it has to do with the craft itself. In other words, the, the publication isn't necessarily peer reviewed by scholars, but it's vetted and internally peer-reviewed by experts, so people with an MBA, you know, or people within a given industry that are talking essentially about best practices. They're speaking in terms of the audience is you. The audience is the person who also works in that field, and some of our databases will allow you to search for those. Before we get to that, though, a couple of terms I want to bring up. Some forms that I can suggest you may want to look for when you're looking at company research or when you're looking at industry level research and you find companies, uh, look for things like 10Ks, 10Qs, and 8Ks. Uh, 10K forms tend to be, when it comes to the company level, you know, your annual reports. These are the things that are required if it's a publicly traded company, uh, if they have an IPO, in other words, if it's a, if it's a public company, um, those are uh, going to have to have those. 
uh, annual reports. Your 10 Qs are going to be more quarterly, so same sort of data essentially, but more often. Now, 8 Ks tend to be written to represent extraordinary events or mergers. Sometimes that can be helpful if you're trying to point out interesting changes in leadership, or things that have to be reported to stockholders to see what's going on. Uh, sometimes they're very mundane. It could be for, for something basic, uh, but it could be something like, hey, we're taking on a new product. We've dropped a product, something that's significantly changing um, or has potential to change the company and its stocks. So a couple things about the company resource side. A couple of things, uh, the, a couple of places you might want to go online, uh, and I mentioned this, but this Edgar, if you do a search for edgar.gov, uh, uh, these are the uh, SEC filings, the Security and Exchange Commission, uh, not the football conference, okay? Don't get those confused. <laughs> um, the Security Exchange Commission, this is a great place to look for uh, data, right, on a given company. So I'm going to launch out here, sec.gov. Uh, as far as a government website, pretty spartan, pretty fair, uh, pretty fairly common uh, design, not a lot of bells and whistles, but it's a good place to look up um, just names of companies. So, for example, I'm going to look up a company in town in Huntsville, Adtran, telecommunications business, and you can see their holdings. So this is very professional, uh, really primary data. There's not there's some secondary analysis, but you'll see several um, documents here filed over the years. Here's some from uh, this last month, it looks like. Uh, and this one, for example, looks like an 8K. Again, sort of the interactive, something must have changed, sensing something has been edited or in some way. So these sorts of reports may be helpful uh, to look at yourself, um, looking at things like 10Ks, 10Qs. Uh, you might get a little uh, information about your report, your company. So just that's some of the basic uh, stuff you're looking for. All right, uh, so another tool I have for you, you might want to try looking with, uh, looking into and playing with a bit is a tool called Croctel. And if you search for croctel.org here, Croctel Core Watch, what it is is sort of an aggregator that's, uh, that has been built that just sort of searches these SEC holdings and presents them in a different way. So it's a way to find out things like relationships that may be a little more difficult to find in a report that you have to dig through. You just want some quick, citable information. So something like a uh, question uh, that I think is interesting uh, in terms of uh, fast food. We think about all those different fast food companies. And if you really think about how many there actually are, but how many actually are owned by the same people. Uh, for example, did you know there's a relationship between Pizza Hut and Taco Bell? Um, there is. Now, how would we find that out aside from doing some Google searching? Now, web searching is fine, but the problem is you know, you're just going to be getting this information from a lot of places that aren't really citable. You know, you need something a little more formal. That's kind of the point of this to get something a little more formal. So going to a website like this, for example, you're going to uh, go into Croctel and do a search for the company. Uh, so, for example, I'll search for Taco Bell, let's say. When you do that, on the left, you'll get a generation uh, of, of data here. And here, for example, I could click on the core, the Cantina core logo or the uh, listing there. And you see in the middle, I'm, it actually goes ahead and pulls the last six or seven years of uh, reports from the SEC exchange for me right here. So I could get the most recent one, and I can click on it, SEC filing, and there we are, and get this year's reports or back here. So we kind of pull some things for you, get some quick data. And I noticed that there's an aggregator down here in the middle that sometimes will pull news or, or maps that will show you kind of the location. It doesn't seem to be working uh, right now, but, but that's just sort of a widget. Um, that's not that important. The important part is the data. Um, you'll see these sorts of reports, and on the right, you'll see the subsidiary tree, and that's helpful to help educate you on sort of company relationships. So we can see here that Yum Brands is the actual company, the parent company that owns Taco Bell. And if you hit the little plus sign, you'll see, look at all the companies that Yum Brands owns. Uh, several KFC adorations, um, Pizza Hut, I think there's a Pepsi tie in here, Taco Bell, uh, that sort of thing. So you'll see relationship companies, uh, relationships between companies uh, in here, and that can help you sort of just see, see relationships. Uh, now, the other thing is that for example, if you're trying to find company information, uh, you probably won't find a company report necessarily for Taco Bell in this instance. What you would find was a, would be a report on Yum Brands, if that makes sense. So just think of things in terms of, I need to find the parent company so I can find how the data is being reported. Okay, so that's one uh, helpful tool I might uh, use uh, in this process, okay? A couple other things to keep in mind as you're searching data to look out for. Um, remember to think about where does your business fit. Uh, think about your industry. 
is what I mean. Uh, think about your the industry or industries you think are most um, va uh, relevant to your company. So one thing you might want to do is go to a place like the NAICS.gov portal, the NAICS codes they're called. Those stand for North American Industry Classification Systems. Uh, for example, we could look up an industry, consider them, and look at the different codes. For example, telecommunications resellers. You know, if we were looking at a company, something like Verizon, or trying to look into starting our own sort of you know reseller of phones and technology, we may want to look at a general industry report, uh, and you can do so. And when you do that, you can gain these codes and get at least a little closer to searching based on your industry within the databases. Some of the business tools like ABI Inform or Business Source Premier, these are tools that if you have used them before, great. But if not, there are some layers that work specifically for business. And so, for example, if I go to the census.gov site here, the NAICS.gov website, and all you have to do, you can see 20, I think every five years they update, five or six years they update these codes. So you could say, with, with my example before, to, uh, ADTRAN, the telecommunications industry. If I did a telecommunications search, uh, I'm going to get codes for all these different uh, manifestations of telecommunications as an industry as reported to the United States government. Uh, so you can see several codes offered here. Uh, carriers, I might get that one. A resellers falls under 517121. Okay, so you could snag those things and come back here to search within. So we'll come to that, back to that in just a moment. Just want to say that's sort of how you grab these codes, write them down as you discover them, because you can use them as search terms. In regards to searching, uh, just as a quick refresher on the library. So the UAH uh, library website is found at uah.edu slash library. This is where I would go to start my research process. Um, looking at the library website, you'll find a big black search bar in the middle of the page uh, that is called Search the Library. It's our Primo Pathfinder tool. It's great for doing broad searching. So things like if you need to find business writing books on how to write business plans to help supplement your classwork or just doing work uh, to find materials on marketing strategies. Uh, for example, e-commerce or social media marketing. If you were trying to learn and look at handbooks and guides on all these things, this is where you might search. So to do that, I'm going out to the website, uah.edu slash library. And if I click here, yeah, I could I could do something like um, let's do the the market strategy search. So e-commerce market strategy. Uh, just as a couple of tips here, when you search in the library, make sure you hit this sign in option here. Uh oh, kind of timed out on myself here. Going to back up. Uh, make sure you hit sign in, uh, and I'm going to open this in. If you ever have this problem, happen again there. Let me, let me back up here. If you ever have this issue, so what I'm going to do is uh, right click on, let me scroll up here to these little tiles. If you ever have that issue like I just did, and I'm just going to keep this in since this does happen from time to time with your cookies in your browser, uh, sometimes you can clear it or uh, what you can do is go to the library account tile here, okay? Okay, and you see it's going to trigger that, okay, good. So what you're going to do is you right click on that and hit open link in an incognito browser. And that will help with that. And then you can sign into Canvas as you normally would, uh, go through your duo process, and log in, just like I did. So once you put your information in, you can now go back to the website and do your searching. And uh, again, sometimes that happens on the website, just sort of a way to get around it if you need to. So if I, let's say I do my search again now, okay. Make sure you're signed in. You'll see your name at the top. Now you see my name at the top, Michael Manasco. Now that's important so you can see more of the information. Uh, going forward, a lot of the information you'll see on the website, you need to be signed in to sort of get all the options uh, to be able to access everything. There are going to be certain articles you may have trouble accessing if you're not signed in. So this will help you a bit. So one thing you can do, for example, you can hit peer-reviewed journals on the left, and that's going to get you to those academic sources. You can see all these uh, journals and things in here. So when you find a journal in Pathfinder, remember, just click on the article. It's going to show you the article. It'll show you who wrote it. It tells me it's peer-reviewed. Great. Uh, remember, before you jump out to read the article, there is a quick toolbar here that has a citation button built in. You can click on that citation tool and generate an MLA 8th edition or APA 7th edition citation for copy-paste. Uh, that is helpful uh, in your work. And then if you scroll down, you'll see a link here that takes me to the database. So this says Science Direct. It's 
going to take me to the database and now I can see the article. So this is a great way to sort of do a handshake between our system and the various databases and just show you where it's going to take you next without having to actually search the database. So Pathfinder is really good about connecting you to these tools and getting you to the PDFs quickly. Um, so, uh, and again, there are different ways you can search in Pathfinder. Um, you could do something, again, just generally about business writing or the technology or industry or company you're searching. But if I do business writing, notice there are lots of books and things that are going to pop up. Uh, if I did um, business writing handbooks, things like that, or guides, I might find a few guides popping up here. On the left, if you see the option for available in the library, you just click on that, and now that's going to show you books that are in print. Click on that to make that change. And now it's showing me a, a few books that are in the library on the shelves that will help me in my business writing uh, skill set development. Uh, things about how to write who, when, you know, for different audiences, uh, handbooks for business writing, that sort of thing. So uh, here's a hand, a business, business plan writing for entrepreneurs, right? And it's the same as the databases. Click on them. And you'll notice this says get it. It is in the library, second floor uh, HD section. I uh, would just go down and write that call number down and go get it. And you'll see lots of recommendations on the right here as well uh, for other books on the shelf. So it's a great way to find these handbooks and things uh, also. So uh, just sort of navigating back to some of our other tools here aside from Pathfinder. Uh, there are databases, uh, industry level, company level. If you're wanting to look at that company level uh, or industry level, we've got great tools like IBIS World uh, for industry reports, um, academic research for general periodicals. Uh, again, might be something like Business Source Premier or ABI Inform. Those are great ways to, to find those databases. Uh, here's a few. There are a few here that I, I would recommend doing if you want to just take a quick look at that, pause the video. Uh, these um, these resources are the databases that I find the most useful uh, for company research, things like Data Monitor or Mergent Online. Uh, for marketing and industry research, you can't do much better than IBIS World or Reference Solutions. Those are all helpful, and there are other tools as well. And I'm going to take us out to the website now. Uh, so this is, uh, let's see, let's uh, go into the database page here. So I'm going to refresh the browser. And on this page is where you're going to be able to navigate to the various databases. So you'll see on the home page, articles and databases. Okay, I'm going to open another browser here. And as this loads, this will eventually list uh, all the tools alphabetically, right, that we have access to. Now, you can go directly to those, but I suggest clicking on subjects and either clicking on business or maybe specifically company research or industry level research. And when you do that, you can hit search and you'll see a listing of all these tools. For example, ABI Inform. If I click on that database, it's going to resolve and take me to their own search options. This is a ProQuest tool. And notice again, see, this is a database that has a spot for these codes I mentioned earlier. Uh, we could type in, uh, one of the codes, 517121, that was one of the telecommunications codes. Uh, we could also come down here and tell it, only show me under source type, trade journals and scholarly journals. And see, before I even search, and then I could type in terms here, like telecommunications or, or, or whatnot, whatever I want, and see what sources pop up. So here's some general uh, news feeds, things like the Orlando Business Journal. And I see that's more of a professional title, more of a, a business title specifically. It's not necessarily a, a broad academic journal. Telecommunication reports, these are industry important news. You know, these are going to be mixed with academic articles. So this is a great place to search as well. Looking at some of the other resources, I'll let you play with those on your own. Uh, but I will point out things like IBIS World, if you look at that. Uh, clicking on uh, using IBIS World, it'll take you to a very uh, a very corporate looking website as well. This, this uh, tool is used in uh, corporate research, not just academic research. You can look up industries by searching up here or click on the industry reports that are trending like fast food restaurants, search for coffee or, or a coffee shop or things like that. You'll find nice uh, um, uh, statistics and nice overviews of the industry itself. 
You can download the reports and the PDFs and a lot of interactive information here, um, such as SWOT analysis, competitive forces, uh, concentration, supply chain management, and all these things that sort of play into uh, this uh, inter external impacts question. So they're also good too when you're um, thinking about uh, uh, diving into um, uh, interviewing uh, companies or interviewing people involved in these industries. Sometimes they'll give you questions to sort of engage with. So that's another great tool we have access to at UAH. Jumping back to the list of databases we have, uh, listed under company research is a tool called Data Monitor. That is a good one to look for uh, parent level reports. So like Yum Brands we identified earlier by doing the Taco Bell search. If I click do a search for Yum, you're going to find that parent level report. And these are updated about every two or three months in our system. Uh, with the most recent version, just click on the PDF and here you have a nice 42 page document. It goes over key facts, financials, uh, top competitors, uh, SWOT analysis, company overview, you'll see here. So this is a great way to learn about that business. You can see even uh, quick agreements and mentions of uh, some of their 8K information, really. If I scroll down, you can see people, places, major products and services, SWOT analysis. Uh, these are great, too, for company-level research. So that sort of brings me to the end of the overview. Uh, that's a quick overview of most of our resources. I encourage you to reach back out here if you need some more help. Uh, reach out to me directly. Call me, email me, look on the page of the side here. We'll direct you toward the website. There's a little column on the left where you can click on get help and then one on one research consultation. You can book time with me. Uh, but reach out if you need help with your project. I'm happy to help you. That's why I'm here. Uh, good luck, you guys. Best of luck.